Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. And if you're new here, my name's Cynthia and welcome to my vlog slash whatever you want to call this style of video. Um, I'm going to be going through a few things today. We're going to be going through my cool sculpting treatment. We're going to be going through some shoe cleaning and lo and behold, as you can see right now, me dyeing my hair. So you will be able to see the full scoop on everything. And because I'm doing like my cool sculpting journey, it's not gonna be like the before and after final results because I've only just done one treatment and I think I'm gonna be doing two. So we'll see what happens with that. But basically, I just wanna go ahead and give you guys an intro to the video because it's gonna go straight into the goods, so. Good morning. Um, I just got out of bed and fully set up my appointment to get cool sculpting done. So we are going to go on my journey to see how successful my results are, what my thoughts are on the experience and all of that good stuff. So I just want to go ahead and give you a really gross before uh, of me in the morning, fresh out of bed. So my acne is still kind of bad. So just like ignore that, but you can kind of see my neck in my messy bed. This is what I'm trying to get rid of right here. It's not a lot, but it's enough to bother me and to have bothered me for a while now. And if I push my chin back, so trigger warning, if you are scared of fat, all of that. And so basically I just did my consult at 10 and I'm gonna go in at noon in Houston to get it done. And basically she told me that I'm going to be getting two treatments done um, per session, two sessions. And the cost was going to be, I think, $600 per treatment. So in total, $1,800, $1,800 total. So each treatment, she told me that it would be 45 minutes and it'd be one per side of my jawline. And since it's kind of a bulky treatment, they can't do them at the same time. So it's 45 minutes here and then 45 minutes here. And I guess the machine or the probe or whatever you wanna call it um, is large enough that it would overlap this fat pad here and also contour my jaw. So that's how that's gonna work. And basically she said that she recommended that over Kai Bella for me. Maybe there's like bias there and a vested interest for her to recommend that. But I kind of understand where she's coming from because Kai Bella apparently is more expensive. There is an extreme turnaround time for Kybella in terms of seeing results and like you have to actually like be down and like not do like activity and stuff like that because I guess you're in pain. I don't know. I really don't understand all of it because it does kind of sound like they're about the same. So unless I'm like really misunderstanding or I'm excited, I'm nervous. I really hope that there are good results with the cool sculpting because I really don't want to waste two grand. Anyway, I'm rambling and I'm noticing how disgusting my face is as I talk longer and longer. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and uh, we can go ahead and jump into the next clip that will be literally one millisecond for you and a few hours for me. So let's go ahead and jump on over. just in case. Uh -huh. 
I just got back from, well, actually I didn't just get back. I've been back. I just got done cleaning up my home, my kitchen and some other stuff. And I finally am ready to dye my hair. So I did get the Inspired by Nature Ion Natural Medium Chestnut Brown. Ammonia free permanent cream hair color. This probably is like greenwashing. I don't really know, but I was told that because it's ammonia free, it may not be as bad for your hair. Don't know. It does say it's gluten free, vegan, ammonia free, PPD free, 100% great coverage, and cruelty free. So do with that information what you will. Since I'm going to be going darker, my hair is currently like a faded red. More specifically, like I think around here, the red still shows. So since my hair is not super dark and I'm going to a darker color from light, um, I'm going to be using volume 10. Here is the before of my hair. It's pretty light. I, would, I don't know what color I would call this, but maybe amber. I don't know. This is what it is before though. And my roots. Look like okay guys, so I think I do have to wash my hair as annoying as that is because I did put some like hair shine mist in my hair today. And that does have dimethicone in it, which is a silicone. And I hear really bad things about silicone buildup on your hair when you dye it. So I am really annoyed, but I think I do have to wash it. No, I def have to watch it. Wash, wash, wash it. I def have to watch it. What? Wash it. I def have to wash it, <sighs> but I'm really annoyed about it because, oh, it's just going to make this process so much longer. Now I'm out of the shower and my hair is literally in ringlet curls, which has never happened before. Super weird. I tried a new hair serum and I'm wondering if that's what it was. Super cool if that's the case. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start drying it more. It's a little bit towel dried by now. This is my hair all dried. It doesn't feel damp at all, just kind of like cool to the touch. But I'm also just realizing that the box under the direction says apply to dry unwashed hair, which it's kind of confusing to me because I swear I have seen like people on TikTok, on YouTube, wash people's hair before dyeing it because of the reason that I said, trying to get out and strip all of the like silicones and just any like chemical buildup in the hair. So I'm just gonna hope that what happens for them happens for me. And I know they probably use special treatments to like strip the hair. So maybe it's different. Maybe it's exposing the like cuticle or whatever of the hair in, in a way that I can't necessarily do. Section. You get along the most with the boys, then... Okay, super quick, I'm gonna be putting Aquaphor all along the perimeter of my face so that I don't stain myself. this song. 
not a professional so I do what I just feel like seems right I don't actually know if this is right my logic with using a comb is to just kind of evenly distribute it throughout the strands and just do multiple passes through the completed process okay here we go here we are I think it's fully saturated I really really tried so hopefully I didn't fuck anything up and I did small strands at a time so it's all clipped up I have a timer going for 30 minutes and unfortunately I do have some bad news that only applies to me and that is that voila love that for me somehow i managed to splatter dye on my cabinets so i'm going to have to touch those up fortunately i do have some paint left so i can do that but you know shit happens i was not anticipating that when i was combing my hair i should have but i didn't that the dye would be flinging at the cabinets so my mistake and put you back up here and we'll just go ahead and do a transition to my hair being all done. Okay, so here it is, um, fresh out of the shower. I've actually towel dried it and added some leave-in conditioner to help with the um, post-treatment process, I guess. And it is looking, I think, pretty even just from being fresh out of the shower. Here's what the top of my hair looks like. And then, of course, the bottom. And then from behind, so it looks like you can get a good view. But anyway, so I'm going to do another transition of me having my hair done. Okay, I'm sorry I keep teasing you, but I have it up right now in some little, what are these called? Rollers. And I'm about to take them out, and we're gonna have a cute little reveal. So, one more transition and then you'll see it. What do y'all think? Wow. I think I love it. Like I don't just like it. Like I think, I think I love, love it. Which is so funny because this is like my natural hair color. But I think it looks amazing. And I feel like it looks pretty even. I mean, hopefully. What do y'all think? And yeah, sorry I'm in my sports bra, and it's like not even a cute sports bra either. Oh my god. I love it, I love it so freaking much. Yeah, I'm just gonna wrap it up here. I think there's like one more thing I kind of want to include in here, and that's me cleaning my shoes. If you aren't interested in that part, you can just kind of skip to the end or exit this video, but I kind of want to vlog that a little bit because I love the stuff I use to clean my shoes, and I feel like it comes out so good, and there's two pairs of shoes I really need to clean, so anyway. I'm done with this portion of the video, and by the way, if you're going to be doing this to yourself, 10 out of 10 recommend these gator clips. These are a fucking godsend, and I even use these to like clip my curlers, my rollers in, and work like a charm. Okay guys, so here are my shoes that I desperately, not super desperately, but you know, are pretty dirty, and I actually kind of recently washed these, maybe like a few months ago, but... They are dirty again because I did some work in the garage and they are dusty. These, however, I don't think have ever been washed. So these are, you can't really tell, but I promise they're dirty and gross. But these are my holy grails for cleaning my shoes. I use the pink stuff and then I actually just use this little um, like toothbrush looking thing from OXO. I think that's the brand name. 
and this side comes in clutch a lot. And let me, let me go ahead and open this up so you can see what it looks like. This is what it looks like. It kind of looks like that stuff that you like fill wood with or wood filler or wall filler, whatever that stuff is. It looks just like that. And it's about the same consistency, to be honest. Yeah, but anyway, so I'll just dip the toothbrush end on this, dampen it a little bit, and just start scrubbing it. And I'm telling you, this stuff works like a freaking charm. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to this shoe. Okay, just gonna put the gloves on real quick. And just take it and just get going. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take some water and rinse it off. So as you can see, not good as new, but like abundantly cleaner. And just for comparison, see a big difference in my opinion. And I think it works really good. Um, I'll do this one off camera, but now we'll do the next pair of shoes. Okay, now for these babies. You can hopefully see a little bit how dirty they are. I feel like it's really easy to see in real life, but maybe a little bit harder to see on camera. Okay, so I just finished this one and this one's been marinating for a second. So let's see, fingers crossed. Um, all of this washes off nicely and get a nice new looking shoe. Okay, I feel like that's looking pretty good. And my goal is never <laughs> for the shoes to look perfect. It's just to make them look nice and clean because ultimately they are shoes and I'm anticipating them getting dirty all over again. So perfection or brand new look is not necessarily what I strive for. It's mostly just a bonus if that's what happens, but I feel like that looks really good. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this up and do a before and after. That wraps up the whole video. I appreciate all of you tuned in. And as you can see, like I am glammed up like I was in the intro. I almost feel like it looks like I'm wearing a wig, but it's giving for sure Halloween. So I'm totally vibing with it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the wild ride of everything that we got done. And I hope you guys tune in on the next video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and good luck on anything that you need luck on. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.